Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here talking about integration of vector valued functions. If we want to compute the integral, the antiderivative, of some vector valued function, then we just do so component wise. We simply look at each component of the vector and integrate each one separately. And notice that our answer, once we integrate, will also be a vector as well. Now, if we have an indefinite integral, like we've written here with no bounds, then we'll end up with a constant of integration for each one of these component functions we're integrating. There are a couple of ways to think about how we'll handle these. We'll show you in a basic example here. So here we have the integral of the vector valued function 4t comma t cubed comma e to the 2t, integrating dt of course. We're going to work this the way we might think it works whenever we've not seen this yet before, and then we'll offer a suggestion on a different way of writing the solution. So if we just come along here and integrate each piece, then what we'll actually get is, this is just a power rule here, we'll have t squared, we'll divide by 2, right, power rule, so we get 2t squared plus some constant. We'll come back to that in just a second. Let's move on to the next one though. Here if we were integrating t cubed, power would go up by 1, divide by the new power we'd get 1 fourth, t to the fourth, but we'd also have plus c here. Right, so I need to differentiate between the two of these because they're probably not even the same constant. They might be, but they're probably not. So let's call this c1 or c sub 1. We'll call this c2, second constant here. And then moving on, the integral of e to the 2t, derivative would have the multiple 2 come out. So antiderivative, we divide by that 2, we get 1 half e to the 2t. We'd have a constant for this one too, so we'd say plus c3. And this would be our answer, the indefinite integral of this vector valued function here. So another way to deal with these constants would be actually to pull them all out and create a vector with these constants in it by themselves. So we could also write this as 2t squared comma 1 fourth t to the 4 comma 1 half e to the 2t and we could also say then plus some vector that has c1, c2, and c3 in it by themselves. And an even shorter way to write this would be to have our 2t squared comma 1 fourth t to the 4 comma 1 half e to the 2t and we'll make some shorthand here saying this is going to be a vector full of constants we just need enough components to match that we should have constants for each of these. So here we can see because this has three components, this will be a constant vector with three components also. So this is probably the shortest way that you'll see people write this antiderivative here. Obviously doing integrals of vector valued functions, you'll have to remember all your integration rules here. So if we're doing the antiderivative of one over t squared plus one comma one over t plus one, comma 1 over square root of t plus 1. All of these look very similar. We want to make sure we keep our eye sharp for our antiderivatives. So this first one here is actually an inverse tangent rule. So our first one is actually inverse tangent of t. This one here is actually a log rule. The second one, if we do u is equal to t plus 1, and du is dt itself, and so we actually get a du over u situation for our integral, and that's a log rule. So this one is actually ln of the absolute value of t plus 1. If we were only considering positive t values, we might not need the absolute value there. This last one here, we can actually do a u substitution. We can think of u as t plus 1 again, and du is of course dt. But then that actually is going to give us the integral of du over the square root of u. And then this is actually considered a power rule, maybe. You might think of this as the integral of u to the negative one-half du, since the square root in the denominator would be the negative one-half power of u here. So integrating, we would get u to the one-half. Dividing by a half is like multiplying by two. So you would actually get two square root of u here for your answer which would end up being 2 square root of t plus 1. So that's our vector there, and then we can go ahead and say plus all of our constants in one vector. Now if you're leaving them out and putting them in your constant vector, just remember to go back and do that at the end. But as long as you're good with your old derivative formulas and some of your substitutions and how to do these integrals, you should be okay. 
For definite integrals of vector valued functions where you have bounds of integration, we'll do a similar thing of just using the bounds to compute a definite integral for each component. Now notice that after we integrate each piece here, we'll be plugging in values and subtracting, so our answer will be a vector with constant components, unless for some reason we're using variables for bounds. Let's take a look at an example here. We've got the integral now from 0 to pi over 2 of the vector valued function 2t, comma sine of t, comma t, cosine of t. So first let's work out the antiderivative of all of these. So if we look at the antiderivative of 2t dt, this is just going to be a power rule. Power goes up by 1, t squared, divide by the power 2. We'll get rid of the 2 there. This ends up t squared. If we do the antiderivative of sine of t, that should just be a definition that we know, I think. So this one's actually going to be negative cosine of t. And of course, remember, we're leaving off the constants of integration because this is a definite integral. Here we have t cosine of t, so the integral of t cosine of t. This is a product, and we generally, if we can't do u substitution, we'll do products using integration by parts. So make sure that you're aware of integration by parts and how to do that. That's a common thing as well. So here we'll choose u to be t, and we'll choose dv to be cosine of t dt. And if we make that choice, then du is just 1 dt, or just dt. And v, the antiderivative of cosine t dt, that's actually going to be sine t there. And if you remember our integration by parts formula, that will be uv minus integral v du there. So this one is going to end up being u times v is t sine of t minus the integral of v du. So we'd have minus the integral of sine t dt. And then if we go ahead and compute this final integral in the biparts formula, we'll get t sine of t plus cosine of t. So now we have the antiderivative of all of our components. So we'll go ahead and write all of that. So we'll have our first components going to be t squared, our next one negative cosine of t, and then our last one down here from our biparts t sine of t plus cosine of t. And we'll do like we do with bounds from calculus one. We'll evaluate this now from zero to pi over two in the same way, just plugging in the upper bound here, and then subtracting what we get when we plug in the lower bound. So plugging in pi over 2 into t squared, that would actually give us pi squared over 4. And then cosine of pi over 2 is 0, negative 0, so still 0 there, comma t sine of t, so we'd have pi over 2 sine of pi over 2 is 1, so that would be pi over 2 times 1, which would be pi over 2, Cosine of t again is 0, so we'd get pi over 2 here. Minus what we get when we plug in our bound of 0. So plugging in 0, 0 squared would give us 0 here. Cosine of 0 is 1, so we'd have actually negative 1 for the second component. And then t times sine of t, we'd get 0 times sine of 0, that's 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so we'd actually get positive 1 there. And then if we do the subtract, the vector subtraction, to get our answer, so just do this component-wise, we have pi squared over 4 minus 0 would give us pi squared over 4 still. For our second one, we have 0 minus negative 1, so that would be positive 1. And then pi over 2 minus 1, which we will leave as separate terms there. So we get that is our answer for the definite integral of this vector valued function with these bounds. Let's look at another type of problem we might see when doing integration of vector valued functions. We're asked to find the position vector given an acceleration function and condition. So we've got an acceleration function here, it's a vector valued function. And we've got conditions. We know that the velocity at time equal zero is two, one, zero, and the position function at time equal to zero is two, comma, one, comma, one. So think about what we need, right? We know the acceleration function, and we need to get to the position function. Well, first we'll have to get through 
the velocity function, right? And so we'll find our v of t and we'll use this condition. Then we will find our position function. So we're actually going to have to integrate twice to get from acceleration to our position function. So let's first find our v of t. So our v of t, our velocity, is going to be the antiderivative of our acceleration function. We'll integrate that dt. Okay, so if we integrate this with respect to t, the integral of e to the t is going to stay e to the t, comma, our antiderivative of t plus 1, that will be 1 half t squared plus t, comma, antiderivative of 2t is going to be t squared there, and now remember we'll have all of our constants, right? So we have, think about you have c1 and c2 and c3, all of those there as well. And we'll use this condition v of 0 to actually solve this c1, c2, c3 here. So if v of 0 is 2 comma 1 comma 0, that says when we plug in 0 for t in our v of t we got here, we should get this vector 2 comma 1 comma 0, okay? So in other words, 2 comma 1 comma 0 is going to be equal to, if we plug in 0 here, we'll get e to the 0, let's go ahead and say plus c1 so we can keep everything where it needs to be. If we plug in 0 here, we'll get 0 for this t squared term and 0 for this t term, so that would be 0 plus c2. And plugging in 0 here for t squared would just be 0, so we get 0 plus c3. And you can see that each of these components needs to match up, right? So 2 needs to equal e to the 0 plus c1, 1 needs to equal 0 plus c2, and 0 needs to equal 0 plus c3. So if this e to the 0 is 1, then we have right here that 2 is equal to 1 plus c1, 1 is equal to 0 plus c2, and then we have 0 is equal to 0 plus c3. So I think we can figure all of these out. c1 is going to be 1, c2 is also going to be 1, and c3 is going to be 0. So maybe let's go back and put all of these in. Instead of putting them in our separate vector, let's maybe put them in our v of t. So our particular v of t that satisfies that condition is going to be e to the t plus 1, comma, 1 half t squared plus t plus our c2, so plus 1, and then t squared plus our c3 plus 0 won't change that there. So this is our particular v of t. Now what we'll need to do is go ahead and take the antiderivative again to get our r of t. We'll use that condition to solve for the constants we get there giving ourselves some room here, so r of t is going to be the antiderivative of our velocity function that we just found. And the antiderivative of these, so this will be e to the t plus t now. I'm going to put my constants in this actual vector here to keep everything together, so we'll say plus c1 in here. For the next one, t cubed, we would need divide by 3, right? So this would be 1 over 6t cubed plus power rule again here, one-half t squared plus t plus our second constant. And then here for this last one, we would have one-third t cubed, and we'd have our third constant as well, c3. Okay, so this now is our r of t. And now let's go make a note of what we had for our r of 0. Our r of 0 was 2 comma 1 comma 1. So r of 0 was 2, 1, 1, then that's what we'll use to solve our c's. So let's go ahead and give ourselves some room. So 2, 1, 1 is going to equal, if we plug in 0 for t everywhere, e to the 0 would be 1 plus 0 there plus c1, comma, plugging in 0 here we'll get 0 plus another 0 and another 0, plus c2. And then here we'll have 1 third times 0, which will also be 0, plus c3. 
So this one, of course, you can see this 2 is going to be equal to this. So 2 is equal to 1 plus C1 in this case. This y component is going to be equal to this one. So this one says 1 is equal to C2. Nothing even to do there for that one. And this one says 1 is equal to C3, right? So 1 is equal to C3. So these are solved. This one here is easy to solve, I think. You'll get that C1 is 1. So all of these constants, it turns out, for this one, are 1. Let's go ahead and take that information and put it back in our general solution for all of those constants. And then we'll write our solution. So our position function that satisfies both of the conditions that we're given, we're going to have e to the t plus t plus 1, comma, 1 sixth t cubed plus 1 half t squared plus t, also plus 1, and last, we'll have one-third t cubed plus one as well.